Welcome to my gaming tree. Hi, I'm Mark Sheriff. It's great to have you back for another episode. Last episode, I talked about the formal elements of gaming, kind of building on the idea of voluntary participation, goals, feedback, adding a bit more in there from the Fullerton textbook. So, what I wanted to talk about today, though, is The Legend of Zelda. An excellent, amazing example of how to do another intro, how to do an introductory tutorial level to show the player how to do things like uh, what are your procedures? What are the rules? How do you get involved in the game? So let's jump right into it with Link to the Past. Now, when this game came out, this was the reason I got a Super Nintendo. I was so excited for Zelda 3. The first time I popped it in, the Triforce flew in here with Mode 7 graphics. Oh, so, so excited. So, what I wanted to show you here is basically the intro mission when you, as Link, are going in to initially save Let Zelda. Remember when I talked about goals? Help me. Please help me. Go. I just hit the start button. I'm a prisoner in the dungeon of the castle. My name is Zelda. Oh my gosh. They're laying it out for you right now. The wizard Agadim has done something to the other missing girls. Now only I remain. Agadim has seized control of the castle. It is now trying to open the seven wise men's seal. I'm in the dungeon of the castle. Help me. Sounds good. Now... Going out for a while, I'll be back in the morning to the house. Your uncle is out and leaving, noticing very obviously he's got the sword and the shield. Gave me a nice track of that. So see how we can get out of the, get the opportunity to first move around Link, see what you can interact with. Now, anyone who's played games or, you know, before getting to the Super Nintendo would look at this and see, oh, there's some things I can interact with in here. This is a treasure chest, and I got the lamp. Now, if I didn't know to hit A there because I read the manual, and like I mentioned last game, video, you read the manual, um, by the way, it tells me what the lamp does. If I'm pressing the button on the controller, when I finally hit start, which is a common button to press, it shows me that Y uses my items and A does things. Lift, read, talk, pull. Perfect example of the game explaining right here. Here are the procedures. Here are the ways you are allowed to interact with this game. If I come back over here, and, oh, these look interesting. I could press it. You are short on magic. Oh, I hit the Y button. Okay, Y does the item. Okay, I can't use that. B, nothing. X, nothing. Huh, a heart. It's interesting to note that. We'll come back to that. So you come out, and there's an obvious path down. Okay, so I go down the path, and I see those soldiers. Maybe I go down here to talk. What? You're up this late? You can't stay when you're out the road. Oh, okay. Now, most people might try again. I see you brought a map, so you don't get lost. Press the X button to see your map. Another procedure right here. I press X, and I can see immediately on the map. That's where I am. Flashing red X. That's where I need to go. Okay, so you look at the map, figure out where you need to go. Great, let's head that way. Following a big, broad path, being very obvious about which direction I need to go, leading the player. Very, very helpful. Now, this right here, I, I like to think this is intentional. The hearts along the bridge, kind of representing the hearts from when you picked up the pots in the house. Good example of trying to get you moving along. Help me, I'm in the dungeon of the castle. Another message, I took too long. I'm not an ex expert player, I'm learning. Okay, I know there is a hidden path from outside of the castle to the garden inside. Okay, so we need to find a hidden path from outside. Now, I know I can't go past this guard. I've already tried that. So when I get here, I have a path to the right which has overgrown grass, or a path to the or to the left, pardon me, or to the right where there's a path. Most players are going to follow the path. So I follow the pattern, uh, the, the pattern of, of the, the bushes that I go past. Now I have one bush. Now I have several bushes. Now I have more bushes. Bushes intensifying, basically leading me down this path to <laughs> the holy bush, the sacred bush. Now, I've learned I can't do much with Y, and I can't do anything. I mean, X brings up a map. That's great. A lifts things, so you're just pressing button. Most players are probably still holding up when they hit A, and they're just going to fall in. Now, there's no place to go here, but this way, where I run into my uncle, I cannot do anything but run into him. So I'm going to leave the house, take my sword and shield, focus power in the blade, hold the B button. Your next procedure. So, quickly, the game is ramping you up. And release it using sacred technique. Our people, say the princess, Zelda is your something. 
So now I test it out. Pressing B, swing the sword, hold down B. Now watch. We can see sparks travel down. We can hear that sound. We then know we can release that. We move through here. We have our first enemy, and you don't have much time to think. You immediately come out and you start swinging the sword. You follow that path naturally. This looks obvious. Well, now it shows you that you can pick up money uh, or rupees. So you can see that the rupee feedback is a very positive one. And we have more pot from the house. It showed us that we could pick up these pots. Let's pick them up here. I have no idea what that is. The meter just went up. Huh. What does this do? It allows me to light that torch. When I do that for the first time, the screen gets brighter. That's a hint that that's what the torch is going to, or the lantern is going to let you do later in the stage. I've now exited. I know I can pick up bushes, but probably start swinging the sword. Oh, look, I can sneak through here. Pass the guards. No, I need to go into the castle. That's what I do. Now, this is the first kind of open area that anyone is going to run into if they're playing the game. Um, I'm just going to go right where I need to go. But admittedly, the first few times I ever did this, I went around a lot. Um, but it's a good opportunity for the player to get to go around and figure out what it's like to be in a Zelda dungeon. And that's really what it's all about. Now, I'm not going to kill him just yet. Can't go through. Try to push on the door. Can't do it. Oh, I, have to, I have to get that guy. Maybe it's something in the chest. Ooh, a map. You've got the map. You now see it this, the rest of the, your location. My friend X. I guess i got to beat the blue knight. I can do. He comes up. Picks it up. Rule of the game has now been... A door with a lock on it is something I cannot go through until I have a key. When I use the key, the key is you. So the rule here... Um, is one that's common throughout a lot of Zelda dungeons, which is the way it gates off parts of the level, forcing you to complete tasks before you can move forward. This is one way of doing that. We're going to see another way of doing that later on. But I pick up the key and I do that. This is the first chance I get. If I'm still holding down, I will quickly learn that I can, whoops, that I can jump off of there, which is a really neat thing to learn. That's not been a thing in Zelda up till now, or at least the top-down Zelda. And I get my first opportunity to knock a bad guy off the edge because that bad guy was right there at the edge when I jumped down. So now, ooh, I got a taste of that. I want to do more. Yay! I'll learn I can hit him with a spot. Or I'll just get hit a lot. Nowhere else to go but this way. So I go this way. This is kind of cool. This is where... Um, we get to see that we actually get to walk underneath something again, which is kind of a neat thing for Zelda. Uh, if you are looking around, you kind of see the path goes back and around, so I don't necessarily want to go that way. I do see another door up here. So hopefully the player eventually moves toward that door, and bam. I'm now in another way that it's gated off the room. Now we have kind of the angry face doors, and um, if you played Zelda 1, kind of know what's going on here. You've got to kill the things in the room, push a block, something like that. But I can't go up because I don't have a key. I can't go back. I can't go to the right. I've just got a green knight. So now it's going to teach me that that's how you open door. But I still can't go up. I still don't have a key. Only one way to go. I go in here and now once again it shows me I can't leave. Well, it's obviously in that treasure chest, isn't it? Oh my. Well, no, there's the key, but Look at this room. It's just begging me to open this. You've got a boomerang. Give it a try. Select an item, press the start button. That's how you're going to interact with the menu system in order to choose new, new items, new weapons. And now I've got the boomerang. Now, th this room is set up this way to show you there is a special item in here. I've got the key. I'm now allowed to press. Come up here. That. Going further into the... So right there in that in that opening part, we learned so much about what Link is allowed to do. He can jump off ledges, he can knock enemies off ledges. This is how locked doors work, this is how the, the gated doors work, here's what an item looks like. Just all sorts of things you're picking up. Now, you come down here, this obviously looks like a dungeon. Hey, I should just try and get Zelda out of here. And it's locked. If you had the big E, you might be able to open it. Next rule. 
there are going to be doors that are locked in ways that you can't use a small key on. You have to complete a special task, typically the big boss battle. If this guy doesn't scream big boss battle for intro Zelda, I don't know what does. So how do we beat him? Well, if you learn anything from before, you learned in the pot. And you want to keep your distance, so you learn to do that. Is that a big key? That's a big key. Oh yeah, Link's pretty excited. You got the big keys, master key, you can open many things, open it up, walk right in, Zelda talk. I had a feeling you were getting close. Yeah, thank you. Listen carefully, the wizard magically controlling all the soldiers in the castle. Yes, yes. Do you understand? Thank you, I do. But that's another opportunity for the intro player to get another explanation if you were just tapping through and you wanted to learn it. Now let's get out of here. I know a secret path. First, we have to go to the first floor. Your next goal, your next objective. It, this is fantastic about laying out, here's the next thing, here's the next thing. You don't have to think too far ahead. Pick it up, more money, sounds great. Let's get out of here, Zelda. Now this is showing you that you can escort characters. Now admittedly, there's not too many escort parts of uh, Link the Past. There's a, you only get a monkey through for the Eastern Temple. There's a thief ghost thing in one of the uh, Dark World dungeons. Anyway, if you keep pressing down, you end up going up these st steps and you find effect short back. Now, novice players might not figure that out, that's okay, but for players who are replaying the game, that is a big help to them because you get to skip quite a little bit. So I'm just gonna zip here as fast as I can. Back on the first floor. Main room. Now it's nice that the runners on the carpet are kind of showing me what to do, but when I get back here, there's a secret passage in the throne room that leads to the sanctuary. I'm sure the old man there will help us. Great. How do we get to the throne room? Well, nothing screams throne room like going higher like this. This looks throne rooney. Very much so. And now, ah, you want a little shelf should open. You got a light. It's dark. Can't see without one. Ready? Let's go. Help me push it on the left. So helpful. Thank you, Zelda. Of course, her sprite isn't actually doing anything here, just the way the sprite works. Back to the lantern. She told me I needed to have the lantern, so I have the lantern equipped. If I don't have it equipped, um, oh, I get the same amount. I guess because I have it. But, ugh. Let's light that up. I don't remember how much this I could skip. Zip through here. We learn how the lanterns work. We learn how moving from place to place work. Um, in the dark. Light this up. Oh my gosh, look at all the things. That's supposed to be a nice little, I don't know if jump scare is the right word, but a nice little moment where the player is like, oh my gosh. Making it through this neat little dungeon. Ah, how about that? So I would have had to search around a while dark in order to find the key that I need. Exit here, but it's not that large room. Passing through the sewers very close to the sanctuary. Let's be careful. Up. Again, there's only one path that I can take, so that makes it a little bit easier. I'm gonna stick to the path itself. new player probably would do. They get to the end. Where do I go? Walking. Finally found a torch. There's the exit. Much of a puzzle. End of a puzzle. Need a key. How am I going to get a key? Start killing things. Wow. First try. First try every time. Four. Torch. Now, okay, over here, we get our first indication that there's another way of interacting with the environment, the bomb wall. I can't do that yet. I don't have bombs. There's no way to get bombs in here without creatively cheating. Um, so this is just a, this is a hint. This is a taste. This is, you're going to have to come back here if you want to get in there to, to see something else. So skip on past this. First block pushing puzzle. Now this one is 
pretty straightforward because there's really only one place you could stand. When you try left to right, those doesn't work. Go forward, first block move. Now learn you can move blocks in the world. I'm now obviously left the sewers. Red rupee, horrible. Ah, the sanctuary just beyond the door. Pull that switch over there. Ha 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 ha. Uh, Zelda giving us our first taste of something. Try the left one. No, and so you heard the sound. That's going to come up later on in the game as you try different things and you get a negative. In this case, a bunch of uh, snakes fall down. You have to pull the lever to open the door. If I'd walked over here first, it would have figured that. Uh, it, and it told me how to do that. I, pre I go up to it, hold down the A button and pull. For the one on the left, I might or might not have known how to do that um, if I had read the instructions. When I went to the menu, lock the door. Now, here we are. We've made it to the same where we get a little bit more story and we get the next bit of information that we need to help escape um, zeal will open we have more information about the overall goal the overall objectives um, that we must do um, it releases the seal evil power uh, legend of zelda these things um potent weapon you need the master sword that's your next link buddy you gotta go get one of these Gotta go get one of those. So, it said that the village is a descendant of one of the seven wise men. Maybe he can tell you more. Mark his house on your map. Watch your every move. Uh, I'll head out of here. Seek the elder. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Exit. I get my first heart container. You found a heart container. Your heart level increased. We do another indication of how the world is going to reward you for your actions. When I leave the sanctuary. I get the theme song. Your adventure has begun. Check the map. You now see the X. You know your next objective. And that, my friends, is The Legend of Zelda. An amazing game. If you've never played it before from beginning to end, there's so many different ways you can get a hold of it. Uh, this right here through uh, the SNES uh, Online, uh, through Nintendo Online on the Switch is one way of doing it. Uh, in SNES Mini, if you can find one of those nowadays. It is just a master class, like many of these Nintendo properties um, from the early SNES days um, on how to do game design. So if you've never played this game, I highly encourage it. And then once you play this, go play um, the direct sequel on uh, 3DS, um, Link Between Worlds. And it is also wonderful if you've never gotten a chance to play it. So, Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for helping me go through the, the intro dungeon for Legend of Zelda. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to coming back with more. Thanks for hanging out with me under the gaming tree. And I'll see you next time. Bye.